The greatest men in mankind were those who knew they are nothing. So many of us believe that we are Christians, that we are something good, something highly talented and gifted. Paul said, I am nothing. And when I said, you Lord speak to me, I heard his voice. His sheep hear his voice. Now I expected from him a word of comfort, a word which should strengthen me in my faith. Instead of this, I heard very strange words. He put to me a question. What is your name? It's very strange for a God to ask somebody what is his name. But he has put such strange questions before. He asked Adam, Adam, where are you? Well, if he is God, you should know where Adam is. He put this question to Adam, not because he did not know, but to make Adam think, am I not in the wrong place, hidden in a bush, hiding myself from my creator, before whose eyes nobody can hide himself? He had asked me, what is your name? I bowed before him and said, Jesus, I have no name. Allow me to bear your name. And that is what he really wishes from us. Paul understood it. Not I live. The I has been abolished. Not I live. But Christ lives in me. Jesus tells us, whosoever wishes to come after me should cease to write I with a capital letter. Whosoever wishes to come after me should deny himself. His brother, his fellow man, should come first. God should come first. And he's somewhere in the rear. Whosoever wishes to come after me should deny himself, not be anymore, not I live, but Christ lives in me. Out of what did God make this beautiful world? He made it out of nothing. So nothing is a very valuable material. You can make a universe out of nothing. If anyone would try to make all these things out of gold and diamond, he would not succeed. But out of nothing, God created this world. Then we remembered in those prison cells that in Job 26 it is written, God hung the earth upon nothing. If God would have hung the earth upon a thick cable of steel, the cable of steel would have broke. But when it hangs upon nothing, nothing is the most resistant material in the world. The earth hangs upon nothing and it hangs well. It does not change. You must not have a thing to thank God for. If I have a new car, I will thank God for. You can thank for the old car. The old car has four wheels and you can have a very good ticket from the police with the old car. You don't need a new car for it. And you must not have some higher pay, and you must not have some higher position to thank God. A bird does not think, a bird does not sing because of the things it gets. The bird sings because it has a song in its heart. And Christians are simply thankful and grateful in their character, and they thank not for things. They thank because they are thankful. But the nothing opposes no resistance. As a lamb went to the slaughter, so did Jesus go, without any resistance. The best wine is the old wine, and the best theology is the old theology. And the best thing to be followed in the church is what the first Christians have done. The detachment of the things of this world, and attachment to the heavenly bridegroom, he is our Lord, and not the transitory things of this world. When you deny yourself, when you can say like Michelangelo, I am not a painter, and you are a Michelangelo. And when you are a child of God, who takes a cross upon himself, and no, I am a nothing. It's much too big a privilege for me even to say that I am a cross bearer. I will not dare to shout loudly, I am a Christian, because I know what a great thing is to be really a Christian. Then God takes possession of your soul. Christ 
reigns in you. And then you have great triumphs. There exists a conquest of suffering through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a shame to be a lukewarm Christian, to be a shallow Christian. There is no motive to be so. He has given his life glad for us, even singing to get some money. Let us also give wholeheartedly our lives to him. Let us be dedicated to him in the service of God the Father.